I wish this, that, that plug wasn't there. It'd make this look nicer. Anyhow. Hello, everybody. So today I want to talk about third abilities and paladins. You know Overwatch usually has characters with just two abilities, and these characters are like fairly complex and have a lot of depth to them and all that, and that's great. So I was wondering, how is Paladins taking characters of a whole other ability and making sure that that ability is not useless, but the character still has like a nice amount of depth and complexity? So to answer that, we're going to look at a few characters whose fourth abilities seem useless at a first glance, and then see what Evil Mojo has done well or what they've done poorly to make these abilities either an awesome part of that character or just bloat. Title card. So the thing that got me thinking about this was Alacrity Leon. If you think about it, Leon's kit and what she does, there is no reason for whatever her right click is called to exist. Like, what does her right click actually contribute to her kit? What does it do? It is almost identical to her autos. It does the same amount of damage as her autos. It gives her like a little bit of burst, but it doesn't really do anything for her kit. If it disappeared, you wouldn't play Leon that differently. Except for Alacrity. Because Alacrity needs the reset, she needs her right click combined with Swift Jade for that auto aim spam thing that she's got going on. And that's where Paladins makes these ferret abilities work, is that customizability. If an ability is borderline pointless on one build, then it might be essential to another. Now it's probably important to point out that this isn't every character, a lot of characters do have free abilities that are all useful to any build, most characters do, to be honest. But I just want to look at the ones that aren't, because that's the topic of this video. You saw the title, you can read, fuck you. I, I, that, that fuck you wasn't in the script. That was kind of spontaneous. I don't know if that should be it, but honestly, that's up to you to decide. So Leon's example is eh, but let's actually look at a good one. Grok Shock Pulse, if you think about it, like base Grok, even Totemic Ward Grok, you don't really use Shock Pulse too much. It's not useful. The usefulness comes from the cards that are built into it, plus Maelstrom, plus the talent, where all of a sudden you're doing top damage in the lobby because you can spam right click so you can heal off them, so you can get movement speed, so you can get regen, so you can get ammo, so you can do a lot of damage, and all of a sudden you have a viable build. Another good example would be Buck. Buck's net is not essential to his kit. Like, it's nice, because you can squeak it in between auto attacks and not lose fire rate, but again, you wouldn't play Buck any differently if you didn't have his net. But again, we can look at ensnare builds, and the speed and the lifesteal that you can get from his net. Despite ensnare being, like, bad, it's, it's still good design. So you can kind of get the idea here. It's the talent and loadout system that really makes all these different abilities shine, because it gives you more options to work with. So where the system fails is when it doesn't give you options to work with. Let's look at Dredge, because he's actually a really interesting example. So Dredge is a broadside. It doesn't have a talent built around it, which already makes this options thing a bit difficult. But at one point, uh, there was a card that he had that he still has, actually, um, and it made him jump off his broadsides. And this card has been pretty heavily nerfed. I think the Random Dude made a video on how to use it, and I'll like, link that if I can. But you can't do those jumps anymore, the card was nerfed. So because the jumping card isn't good anymore, it's not as playable, you don't play it in dredge builds anymore. And because his other broadside cards are also not very strong, they're not very unique, they don't do anything for dredge. So broadside becomes a pretty useless ability. You could remove broadside and dredge would work just as well with two abilities, just like an Overwatch character. We can also look at Anara. Anara has her Borders Field ability. It's useful, but it's more of a minor thing in her gameplay. You can build towards it. People do build towards it, even if it's not very strong, or even good. Viable, even. What I'm trying to say is that Cripple Anara is shit. Uh, but the different issue here is that you can build towards it, but the way that you do build towards it is boring. You have CDR, and you have DR, and a little bit of healing, but that's it. Nothing like Dredge's broadside where it's actually going to change the way that you play. You could talk about how for some characters, CDR and DR and a little bit of healing is super impactful, like Maeve with her dash. But Maeve has that same issue with 9 lives. This problem, by the nature of affecting individual champions and talents and abilities, is going to require understanding what causes these individual problems and coming up with individual solutions. And this might sound like I'm recycling the Illusion of Choice video. And maybe I am a little bit. 
The illusion of choice said that talents and builds are the same because there are no real options, despite the game showing you so many. And as a solution, we need mass reworks and buffs to actually achieve variety. This video is about what those options need to be. Paladin set up a great system where each talent and ability and cards can each do their own unique and wonderful thing. But they don't. Right now, most cards are literally either base CDR, a little bit of healing after using ability, DR after using ability, speed after using ability, or the usual armor weapon cards like HP, ammo, shield below 35% XP, or the inbuilt region, those sorts of cards. And, and these can be fine. And some of these cards create really interesting playstyles, and they're great. But there's only so many you can have, there's only so much you can do before it gets boring. Builds should not be four different ways to do the same five things. Even when we get past those five things, you get things that pop up extremely often. You get cards that increase the scaling of abilities, cards that reset cooldown of mobility when you drop below whatever percent HP. And even just tweaking these cards so that they don't just proc after using an ability tends to help make them better. Like Barrack's Healing Station card, having his turrets heal him in an area instead of just having it be like heal for a hundred after using turret, that's awesome, that's fantastic. And this is all disregarding the issue of the balance of these cards, which is more in the Illusion of Choice video. Cards should focus on different abilities and effects and do different things. Cool stuff, like Dredge's broadside giving him mobility. So in this talent and loadout system, there is so much potential and the cool cards that we have are really damn awesome, but instead we have loadout cards that are extremely repetitive, which hurts variety, which makes these third abilities feel useless, and doesn't do anything to make this game feel different from games like Overwatch. Builds should not be four different ways to do the same five things. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye. I don't know what I did with my hands there at the end. Like how how did how did this happen? I what what kind of man. What the shit? <laughs> okay.